Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Today I'm going to show you a high round strategy on Firebase Z that can easily push you over the round 100 mark. There are quite a few things that you need to have in place in order to make the strat work, so I recommend you watch the entire video before you jump in and try it for yourself. The first essential is Ring of Fire upgraded to skill tier 3 in the menus. If you've done the penthouse strat on D Machine, linked in the description and in the top right hand corner of the screen right now, you'll feel that this is pretty familiar, and it's because we're using a similar kind of idea to make the strategy work. The loadout weapon you choose isn't particularly important. I would recommend whatever you're comfortable with for your first maybe 20 rounds or so. The shotguns are still king in terms of DPS in this game, so having a Gallo or a Howit is a very strong idea. And putting Blast Furnace on it is going to mean that you can take out Manglers more easily, but we'll get to that later in the guide. The strat is going to work best when you have all of your perks. Jug, Speed Cola, Quick Revive, Deadshot, and Stam are essential. And the main thing you're going to be grinding for in those early rounds in order to be able to start your strategy is the AK-84. Now there are several methods to get the AK in your game. You can build it, which is the guaranteed method, and I've got a guide for that linked in the description and in the top right hand corner of the screen as always. If you click the card, it'll open in a new tab. You can watch that there and then come back to this. Or you can spin the box or try and get it out of a legendary trial reward. You can also get the AK for free from the bunny easter egg. If you're in the spawn and you look at that bunny and then you do the little mini game in the dark ether, you can potentially get the AK there. So use one of the methods to get the AK in your game and you're you're going to want to basically upgrade it as much as you can for whatever round you're on. If you've got enough points, upgrade that bad boy. The next essential is to keep this door closed. You cannot open the door under any circumstances. It will completely destroy the strap. So if that door opens, you're pretty much screwed. For special grenades, I recommend decoys. They're going to be extremely useful for if you go down or if you just get into a tight spot. And I also recommend that you have a chopper gunner sitting in your inventory ready to use at pretty much any time. If you're worried about the rate that you're burning through your rare salvage, you can also use, for example, a cruise missile in certain scenarios as well. A tip for PC players is to potentially actually get rid of all of your grenades. The reason being, if you accidentally fat finger a key on your keyboard and you throw a grenade during this strat, you're pretty much dead. Like, it can be an actual death sentence to do that. So be very careful not to accidentally throw grenades and potentially just get rid of them in the first place. The strat is going to rely on the Ray K's alternate fire. And so I'm going to refer to it as the ball when you have the alternate fire shot and I'm going to refer to it as the shockwave when you blow the ball up and cause it to incinerate whatever is nearby. If you don't know how this works, you press up on your D-pad or default key B on your keyboard. It will switch your Reiki to a kind of grenade launcher mode and you'll be able to fire a ball out. And then if you switch back to your regular fire mode and shoot that ball in the middle, it will explode and cause a shockwave. This slows down mimics and manglers, which is really useful and we're going to rely on that for this strategy. A key detail also is that the balls will disappear faster if you don't quickly switch and fire a couple of shots into them. Even if you aren't going to shoot it enough to actually make it explode and cause a shockwave, you can extend its duration as a ball just by firing a few shots and then going back to your alternate fire. This is the core principle of how we're going to do this strategy. And so from here, I'm going to show you my full round 91 gameplay doing the strat, which should clearly illustrate how the strat kind of flows from round to round. When the round starts, wait for a zombie to jump through that red window in the back there, and then shoot your alternate ammo type, that's the ball, in the middle of the room. At lower rounds, this timing is a little different. You can probably wait for the zombie to be a little further out of the red window towards the closer window to you. But because I'm at round 91, I'm doing things for super sprinter speed zombies and so I fire my ball when the zombie gets out of the red window. As soon as you have a ball, switch back to your regular fire and shoot it three to four times. You do not want to explode the ball, you just want to shoot it a couple times so it prolongs its duration. Then switch back to your grenade launcher and fire another ball as close to the original one as possible. Then switch back to regular fire and shoot to explode that ball, creating a shockwave and killing any zombies in the vicinity. Then reload and straight away fire another ball into the center of the room once more. We're now going going to repeat what we just did. We're going to shoot it a couple times with regular fire to make it last a bit longer, switch back to alt fire, fire another ball, and then make that ball explode, killing any nearby zombies. As you do this, keep an eye on your ring of fire charge. At around like round 91, you'll get a full ring of fire charge from around two shockwaves. At lower rounds, you may find that you need to actually do three shockwaves to get your full charge, but this shouldn't inhibit the strategy. When you've got your ring of fire, run into this corner here with your back to the bench and the left side of you touching the window, and pop your 
ring of fire. You then need to shoot all the zombies that are running in the main doorway here. It's going to be pretty hectic and you are going to have mini bosses jumping through the window in front of you. So don't get intimidated by that. Hold your ground and mainly prioritize the zombies coming through the main doorway. The reason for this is the Reike is going to stagger stuff that does make it through the window for a moment. And so you basically need to make sure that the doorway is shut before you swivel your attention to whatever's by your side, and then you can swivel back to that main doorway and keep shooting at whatever's coming towards you there. As the ring of fire is about to expire, shoot another one of your balls into the middle of the room and then basically repeat the steps that we started at the beginning of the round. The reason you can keep doing this through a round is the mimics and manglers drop ammo for you when you kill them, and so every time they jump through the window and they die, you're going to get yourself a little bit more ammo and a little bit more armor. It's also really important to note that in the kill stops you from charging your ring of fire so i'd avoid insta kills if you can and if you do accidentally get one you can still kill loads of zombies using your ball on your reike but you just need to be extra careful because obviously then you'll need to go through an extra couple of shockwaves to get your ring charged once the insta kill runs out now i just recommended that to create each shockwave you fire a ball top it up with a few regular shots, fire another ball, and then blow it up, and that's your shockwave. But at lower rounds, you might find that it's more effective to shoot a ball, top it up with a few shots, shoot another ball, top that up with a few shots, and then shoot a third ball, and only then should you switch back to regular fire and blow up the ball in front of you. The reason for this is that the zombies get to you a little slower at those earlier rounds, and so this can be a nice way to ensure that there are zombies in your vicinity before you create the actual shock. At the end of each round, you need to collect all the resources Sources that are on the floor in front of you. You can also run over and grab a full armor refresh if you need to, and there is an ammo crate really nearby if you need some extra ammo. Also, if you used a chopper gunner during the round and you haven't got one back yet, now is the time to do it. Be real quick, grab yourself a new chopper before the next round starts. There's also often a mangler at the end of each round as well, and that's why I recommended a shotgun with blast furnace earlier on too, because that way, you can just take the mangler down super quickly with the shotty and then get back to business. Now then, what happens if you get a defense round and you have to take down the Elder God order? Well, when those rounds start, run over to where the defense is happening and the zombies will spawn in first and you can take those down super easily with a shockwave. Your ring of fire can then be used to beam down the order. And remember, this isn't going to give you a damage multiplier because the damage multiplier from ring of fire does not apply to the order, but it is going to mean that you don't have to reload and that makes your life a lot lot easier, aim for the head of course, and if you want a little bit more firepower, air support like the cruise missile can be pretty effective against him on the current patch that I'm recording this on right now. Using dead shot on these rounds is also really useful because that's going to mean that you're going to snap to the boss's head a little bit more easily and it's going to give you a damage buff each time you do that. Now this is all great, but what happens if you go down? We have to be able to recover. Here's an example clip of me dying so you can learn from my mistakes. I'm mainly focusing on the zombies coming out of the doorway while I'm in my ring of fire part of the strategy, but then I get distracted and I look to my right. This instantly means that the zombies coming through the door have a chance to attack me, and then I get flustered, the thing on the right attacks me, and it just leads to me going down. The moral of the story here is I should have focused on the stuff coming at me from the front, and if I felt like I was taking too much damage from the thing on my right, I should have popped my chopper gunner, or I should have thrown a decoy grenade. There will be times though when you play things right and you still go down, so if that happens, wait as long as you can while down without losing your third perk in the little list there. And this will give the zombies time to kind of exit the room and clear your way a little bit. Then you're going to basically want to copy what I'm doing in the gameplay here, running and shooting the balls in front of you so that the zombies that are behind you basically get slowed up and can't catch up to you. Then you can run over, rebuy any decoys, self revives, and chopper gunners that you might need. And you can teleport back to the village where you can grab yourself the perks that you've lost. You can also top up your armor while you're there. And if you need to craft a little bit there, you can do that as well. Now to make make our recoveries as easy as possible, early in your game, you want to make sure that the first three perks that you buy are Jug, Quick Revive, and Stamina. The reason for this is you're going to lose the other perks that you have when you go down, but you'll keep those three, and those are the best ones for recovering, and you can just buy the others from the Wonder Fizz easy peasy. But having Jug, Quick Revive, and Stam will make it much more likely that you do survive doing the actual recovery. Another tip for recoveries that also applies to any point in your game is if you get stuck in the village and it's just too chaotic in there, and maybe you're trying to buy a perk and you're just too frazzled by everything going on, if you have a chopper gunner, you should use it 
but don't kill any zombies with it. The zombies will run off to the staircase here for some weird reason, and if you then exit the chopper early, you can quickly grab the perk that you need and then run up the stairs, jump across to the mantle, and exit via the teleporter super easily. Or just run past the zombies like I'm doing in this clip here. I should make a note though about exiting choppers early. If you're inside the weapon lab and you're anywhere near that back door, do not, whatever happens, exit the chopper early. Just wait for it to expire instead. And the reason for that is that if you're holding square or whatever your use key is on PC to exit your chopper, there is a high chance you accidentally buy the door. And if you do that, you've screwed yourself. It's game over. Also, if you've got C4 and you double tap square to try and explode it while you're in that room, chances are you're gonna open the door as well. So I would definitely avoid C4 and definitely avoid exiting the chopper early if you're anywhere near the door itself. I also want to give a shout out to the MC Zombie Slayer and to Joey Conway here. Uh, the MC Zombie Slayer was the original inspiration for the strat, but Joey Conway has modified it a little bit for YouTube purposes, so big shout outs to both of them. And if Treyarch does change this in any way or a better strat becomes available, I'll be posting it on my channel in a video just like this one, so I'd recommend subscribing so you don't miss that. And maybe even click the bell to turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.